Let's get more reaction direct from Beijing. Joining us now, Professor Wang Wen. He's the executive dean at the Chongyang Institute for Financial Studies at Renmin University. Hi, sir. Thanks for being with us. So, how's this going down where you are today? And whatever the political squabbling going on, this is going to have far reaching ramifications for the economy, the people of Hong Kong, and relations between China and the US, which seems to be getting worse day by day. Yeah. Hello, Professor. Could you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey. Actually, yeah. Actually, I think that, uh, that that Hong Kong is a part of China. That uh, as you report, that the U.S. intervention in Hong Kong affairs not only a kind of a hegemony, but also an election uh, strategy of pretending to be tough and regarding China as imaginary enemy. So Trump hopes to win more votes. So it is justice for China to take necessary measures to defend its uh, uh, sovereignty and win the heart of the people. So the tension, as we all know, between uh, China and the U.S. has become the new normal. So, But I think that compared with uh, a trade war, the friction uh, between uh, 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 U.S. and China in Hong Kong is still uh, imaginable. Mm. I mean, there's a huge amount of trade that goes on between the U.S. and Hong Kong, a trillion dollars uh, of trade. What's going to happen now? Who's going to lose most here, uh, China, Hong Kong, or the United States? Of course, I think that uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the United States. In fact, the U.S. has great interest in Hong Kong. Last year, the total amount of U.S. foreign investment in Hong Kong will uh, exceed uh, 130 billion U.S. dollars, and more than 1,300 U.S. companies operate in Hong Kong. And the U.S. benefit from Hong Kong at 100 billion U.S. dollars a year. So the passage of Hong Kong national security law contribute to the stability of Hong Kong and protect the interest of all people in Hong Kong. So I don't know why those American congressmen are so stupid. <laughs> well, China says it's ready in countermeasures. What are we likely to see then? No, I, I think that, yes, as, as, you, as you said, that China has announced a section against some U.S. congressmen and the institution. And I, I, I suggest to my American friends, China is not Iraq, it's not Syria, it's not Afghanistan. China has the strength to make the necessary counterattack. So these counterattacks are forced, but they are equal and justice. Uh, what sort of so attack, I briefly? Think, so uh, uh, I think that we will do a lot. The U.S. will uh, surely pay for its disrespect for, mm. U for China. Now, the other thing I wanted to ask you about, of course, is there's been ongoing debate in Britain about uh, China's Huawei and the uh, rollout of 5G there. It's been hugely controversial. Um, it was going to be allowed, but there's been a huge U-turn on that. And Donald Trump says that he's uh, taken the credit for convincing countries, including now Britain, to ditch it. How is that going to go down? I think that, in my opinion, Trump's idea that he is an empire of the Western world is very ridiculous. Trump cannot do it. The U.S. cannot control the West, let alone the world. And choosing Huawei is the market-oriented benefit of every country. Each country will choose which company technology to use. So in terms of 5G technology, people all over the world know that Huawei technology from China, it's a very good opportunity. It's a very good option. And there's so much investment already in the UK, isn't there? We've got to leave it there. Professor Wang Wen, do come back on the program again soon and tell us more about the reaction. Executive uh, Dean of the Chongyang Institute for Financial Studies at Remnin University. Thank you.